So I'm Caroline Woodward, I'm the Communications Manager at the REF Families Federation and I'm going to be your, your compare as such for today and we're going to start off um, with a session, an introduction by Maria who is our Director at the Families Federation. Thanks Caroline. Okay. Um, good afternoon everyone, it's, it's really great to be here um, and delighted to welcome you all, whether you're watching live with us uh, one o'clock UK time or whether you are watching this on catch up which many people will be because uh, real life jobs families will have intervened. Um, I'd also like to say welcome and thank you to the wide range of organisations that have joined us today to talk about what they do to support you um, and as you know we're here to discuss the real wide range of what's out there for military families for people who are looking for new jobs you might have had a career break your job may have been impacted by the pandemic you might be looking to retrain. And we know there's some barriers. Uh, there's lots of research out there that tells us there's some barriers to military families who are doing that. Your mobility, um, the fact that you may have partners away at very short notice and uh, you've got to hold the fort, all of this makes that harder. So we'll be talking about the support that's on offer worldwide. So most of what we'll talk about today, not every single thing, but most of what we talk about um, should be on offer regardless of where you are around the world in one form or another um, and we're really keen to make it as inclusive as possible because we did a survey around overseas families uh, about 18 months ago and that side of things training and uh, jobs and finding jobs when you return to the UK was a real challenge that came out of that survey. So Having said all that, it's probably the best time it's ever been to be part of a military family in terms of the offer that's out there, the range of organisations that want to help you. So it's, it's not all bad by any means. And we'd encourage you to get stuck in, post questions, uh, come back to us later if you're not comfortable posting questions in the chat here or asking questions now. Um, there'll be contact details and you'll be able to follow up. So what I'm going to do is going to run through very quickly two or three slides, just a little bit more general background um, about the FAMFED. So if I could ask uh, Caroline to do the, do the deed with the slides okay. and uh, move those through, that would be great. Right, so we're going to start off with a, little, a really short video clip. The RAF Families Federation is here for every person serving in the RAF and your family. Whether regular or reserve, single, married or in a long-term relationship, we are here for you all as the whole RAF family. We offer you support and advice on challenges you may face, such as accommodation, health, finances, education and employment. We act as an independent voice for you, working to improve your quality of life, both at work and at home, wherever you are in the world. Our friendly team of specialists can provide you with confidential support and advice. Right from the first point of contact, we're by your side every step of the way and keep the Armed Forces Covenant at the heart of what we do. By asking for our support with the challenges you face, you're making a difference. We identify the key emerging issues and can use the data to represent the RAF community's needs to politicians, the chain of command and policymakers in governments across the United Kingdom. Our aim is simple, make life better for you and others in the RAF now and in the long term. The Families Federation has been a force behind several key changes for the better. Working with the Naval and Army Families Federations and wider networks, we can share best practice examples. To help the RAF family overcome the unique challenges that come with service life, we also work closely with many other specialist organisations to make sure you're talking to experts, getting the best advice and being... ...being treated fairly. If you don't tell us about the problems you face, we can't raise awareness of the need for change on your behalf. It's easy to contact us, get in touch online or on the phone. If you want to stay up to date with the latest news, sign up for our free e-bulletin or quarterly magazine, Envoy. Okay, thanks for that, Caroline. Should we uh, 
just move on to the next slide. So I think that sums up what we just said really in our video, that we're there for you, personnel and families, uh, to improve your quality of life. So whether that's an individual issue that you bring to us um, on a private one-to-one -one basis um, and evidence that we collect, we use anonymously to work for change across government. Have the next slide, please. Uh, and there's some uh, there's some faces behind what we do. So you'll see some of those faces on the webinar today. Uh, but we've got a range of people with a range of relevant experience to support you. About half the team have either served in the RAF themselves or are married to people who are, and the rest have got um, expertise in the field of health. So whether that is education, childcare, health, housing, um, and things like finance, then we've got the people who can either help you solve that problem or contact the people who will do that for you and us. Next slide, please. And in terms of who uses our evidence, well, it gets to some pretty high places and it does enact change. So um, there's some pictures there from the House Commons Select Committee that I gave evidence to last year. Last week, there was a major report launched with a whole load of recommendations about how we can make life better for military families. And that was launched um, by MOD with Andrew Salou, who's a, an MP. So that's uh, that picture there on the left-hand side. It's actually captured without me knowing, so it could have been a lot worse. because You all know what those pictures are like on Zoom when you don't know that the photo's been taken. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's, uh, that's us giving evidence there and responding to that report. Uh, next slide, please. And that's it from me. I'm conscious of time and it was really just a brief intro, give you a bit of background to why we're doing this and to who's there to work on your behalf. And I'll, I'll hand back over to you, Caroline. Yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit to you about Forces Families Jobs. Don't know if any of you um, have or haven't heard of, of FSJs yet, but we're just gonna take you into a quick introduction for them. Um, whilst I'm here, this career pursuit uh, front cover here is a guide that you can get hold of off of Forces Families Jobs. I might forget to tell you through the course of the presentation. So it's just to let you know, and it's particularly useful if you're overseas. Um, and Helen Massey, who actually wrote that guide, um, is overseas herself. She's actually um, out in Canada at the moment, but she's been in various Falkland Islands and all sorts. So uh, very much worth a, a look. So what I'm just going to quickly do is jump on to Forces Families Jobs and just have a quick show for you again because of the time. Right, can everybody see that? Yep. So Forces Families Jobs is a free tri-service website. It's for all three single services run by all three single services. Um, I'm one on the RAF Families Fed Rep, which is why we're doing this introduction now. Uh, um, it's not just a jobs website. Um, yes, it is. And we've got here, you've got three, over 3,700 job vacancies on there, but it's more than just finding jobs. There's also uh, training opportunities, uh, volunteering sections and events. So you can go in and dip into all sorts of places where you can find. So I'm just gonna show you that actually whilst we're here. So on here, we've got all the different events that are coming up for you to tap into. Um, and actually there's a CV writing, for example, on Monday, uh, that's just coming so you can join that if you'd like to if it's of an area but there's also other networking groups here there's the Millspo virtual network and I believe Jess is online with us today as well um, and also if you're be considering becoming self-employed uh, we've got Sarah talking to us in shortly as well so there's lots of linking organizations and actually the people that are talking today in in the different presentations all of their if you forget the names of the organisations, they're all on Forces Families Jobs. So it really is that one-stop shop that we designed it to be. Um, and it's completely free to use. You can register free of charge. Uh, you don't have to pay anything. There's no, and we don't bug you with loads of marketing uh, mails either. Um, I'm just gonna do a, quick, a really quick uh, job search. So thinking of main operating bases around, we've got Brides Norton um, and Shrivenham. Oh, actually, so if we go to Swindon, I'm gonna type in Swindon here. Do a little search out of these jobs and then you'll see Swindon within 50 miles. So let's just take that down to 25, for example, and you'll see that you can do the different sector checks as well. Um, 
job type and also you can look at whether someone is part of an ERS scheme. I'm not going to go into that because we can look at that separately um, and contact me if you'd like to. Um, we could go on. I could talk to you about forces families jobs forever it's actually a really good website to have worked on and really pleased to be able to offer it as a free resource so here's the job says so 52 jobs results have come up within a 25 mile radius of swindon um, and there's quite a different selection as well as you can tell on there so it's not just um, a coffee shop assistant or anything like that there are some really good skilled jobs available um, so please just feel free to go in and have a look round. Um, employers so there are all employers who advertise job vacancies on here are forces friendly um, and by saying that I mean that they understand the unique challenges that come alongside uh, military life so they've all signed what we call the armed forces covenant again if you're not sure what the covenant means there's a section in here that explains all of that um, but again please get in touch and I can talk you through it but everybody that's that's on here has signed the Armed Forces Covenant. There are over 6,000 businesses now that have signed the Armed Forces Covenant to say that they welcome veterans, people transitioning out of the RAF, all three services actually, but I'm talking RAF obviously, um, but also for family members and, and in some cases for older sons and daughters as well. So it's a bit of a, it's a wider offer. Um, the employer directory, you can actually get to see who, who, oh, we're going to have a bit of a lag here, aren't we, because of everything. So you can type in, if you're looking for a particular company, you can actually search for them and see if they're on there. Um, and then moving on to training and career support, there's all sorts of offers on training and career support. And again, so we're going to use business startups as an example, because two of those organisations on here are going to be talking to you shortly. So we've got the Military Co-working Hub, Kelly, I know your logo's just changed. We're, we're on it with that one. Um, another network. There's also um, Sarah's, which is supporting the Unsung Hero. So she's going to be talking, I think, straight after me, actually. Um, and then we've got what's called X Forces, who is also a, um, a startup business. So there's those options for you to just scroll through and have a look and then click through to the, each organisation as we go. Um, another one I just want to point out is funding. So it's worth checking out if you're looking at funding options, which we've had a few questions come in for funding. Just have a, a scroll through. There's quite a lot in there. And also some service specific funding can be available. So it's always worth checking out each three families federations websites. Uh, and volunteering is another area. Not everybody wants to work or can work. They just want to get out and do some volunteering, obviously, maybe not so much at the moment. This is an area we're looking to sort of grow on over the next year. And if you've got any thoughts, comments or input that you'd like to give, then please do get in touch with us. Um, if you want to apply, you can do your CV building as well. So to register, let's just go to job seekers really quickly. You can register as a job seeker by clicking on this tab here. And the form is really quite straightforward. There's not a lot to it at all. And you'll see here, you can upload your CV or you can use a CV builder. So there's that option too. And by doing that, it allows employers to search for you as well. So it's not just a one way street. So I'm now gonna flick back because otherwise you might nod off on me. So that's Forces Families Jobs. On to the next slide. So this is the team. So obviously there's, there's my little mugshot there. We've got Jenna from the Army Families Federation, Lucy from the Naval Families Federation and Sarah, if you click on the help app, the contact us button on Forces Families Jobs, Sarah's the one behind that email. So sometimes it's just nice to put names to faces, but a small friendly team. And obviously the directors of the FAMS Feds get strategically involved with us as well. And we're continually looking to evolve that, that website so that it's a really um, active source for you to go to. The reason we did the website is because of some um, research that we carried out and a lot of uh, the comments that were fed into that report essentially were people weren't aware of the amount of support in, in terms of career support that is out there for you. Um, and so one of the key recommendations was to have this tri-service platform.
So please do have a look and feed in any questions or thoughts that you might have. Here's the help at Forces Families Jobs email. Or if you want to come to me um, directly, that's fine too. Um, just drop an email to me. Um, I'm just going to do a quick check with Richie to see if there's any questions that have come in in the meantime. Uh, thanks, Caroline. There's, there's one question that uh, we got before the, the, the webinar from Laura Jane Turner. And you, you touched slightly a little bit on the Armed Forces Covenant. Yeah. Uh, and Laura, Laura Jane's asked, would it be possible to proactively promote the Armed Forces Covenant to businesses? I just wonder if you can uh, talk about that a bit, please. Yes. So there's an organisation called the Defence Management Relationship Team. They are a whole network of account holders who work across the country working with businesses and sign them up to become the Armed Forces Covenant. They all have different criteria. And when we looked on the homepage, it said silver, bronze and gold. There's different levels of the Armed Forces Covenant that um, organisations can sign. Um, the Defence Relationship Management uh, Team do all of that and they make sure that the companies are held accountable to what they're pledging to support so if heaven forbid you do come across something and you think well that's not right they've said that they they um, they're pledging this but it's actually not materializing in reality then again please get in touch with us because we can feed through to the defense relationship management team and they can then do follow-up checks with those organizations so it's a, it's a good audit check but they're quite a large team based in london but obviously not there at the moment they're all working from home um, but they are work in regions so they're very um, proactive with those organizations caroline can i just add as well um mm. if anyone here or anyone knows of anyone who's in a big organisation that may well have signed the Armed Forces Covenant. So most NHS trusts have, for example, some big schools have, um, councils, almost certainly all councils in England have. The problem yeah. those organisations have is not everyone in that organisation knows that they've signed the Armed Forces Covenant. So something may happen, like you might ask to have flexible working because someone's been deployed, you might... Um, ask if you can have a sabbatical or almost and maybe a transfer if it's a big firm uh, when a partner is posted. Um, mm -hmm. If that firm has signed the Armed Forces Covenant, they should be supportive to at least look at those requests. If it doesn't happen, it's worth coming to us um, with that as a problem because it could mm -hmm. be that it's a matter of finding who that Armed Forces champion is within that organisation to help you. Thanks, Maria. Good points there. So uh, good. Work. Any, anything else, Richie, or are we done? on? The, yeah, Lisa's on that? just posted um, for those in the chat in the chat room. There's a link there to the Armed Forces Covenant and we can make sure that link is also added once we when we put this oh, out uh, after the end of the webinar. And, and a question from Maria uh, saying there's lots of options on the Forces Family Jobs website. Uh, how would you best understand what, what's best for you as an individual? How would you best understand what's for you? Yeah, how would I best understand what, how would I understand what is best for me? I suppose is the question. If I, was on that side, I would, I would have a look round. If you're not sure what you're looking for, or you just need a bit of help or advice, then give us a shout. To either get in touch with me or Forces Families Jobs, and then we can have a chat with you offline um, and talk through the options. And if there, there might be something that's cut, that's new coming on, or something like that as well, that we can, that we can pick up for you. Uh, thanks, okay. Caroline. That's, that's Does it that on, help? The, on the question, yeah. Right. So we're going to move on to Sarah. Sarah, if you want to get yourself off and unmute, uh, unmute yourself, um, and I'll pass you on. There we go. Lovely. Thank you very much, Caroline. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Sarah Walker, and I run um, Supporting the Unsung Hero. Um, for, so Supporting the Unsung Hero is a dedicated business startup programme for the armed forces community. Um, so it's, it's here to help you um, look at whether business is something that you're interested in, something you want to grow and develop and maybe look to have a, a new income coming into your family household and have that most enjoyable journey of becoming your own boss and not answerable to anybody else and working around your family um, and having that flexibility that you might require. Um, so if you don't mind moving on the slide on for me, Caroline. So the programme is a three step sort of approach to the support you can get. Um, stage one is an introduction webinar, which gives you that first insight to what running a business is all about. So it's that first sort of knowledge about whether business startup is something you're interested in um, or not, and um, whether you've just got that first bit of information you want to know about with an hour and a half worth of information to make you make that decision whether you want to go forward with. And we run those every month, um, so you can jump onto, onto those when available to you. I say they're all online, so it's easily accessible as well. 
After stage one, you can move on to then stage two. Um, and this is our in-depth four day um, business startup program. And this is where we go through everything you need to know about your business and in an awful lot more detail to help you really start to think about this idea you've got, making it real, making it affordable and start to bring in that income to your family. So it's a really start of in-depth there. Again, currently all online at the moment um, to give you that flexibility that you might require. Um, but it's all delivered in a nice, fun way um, and interactive way to make sure that you get that full learning experience as well. Um, and then even after the four days, we don't leave you on your own then. You then move into our mentoring program, which is then dedicated mentoring, one-to-one -one support to help you develop your idea further and progress your business plan that you might have as well. So you get full-on support all the way through to help you make sure that this business idea is, is for you um, and something you want to go forward with. And at every stage, it's up to you. If you decide after stage one that business startup isn't for you, then that's okay. Um, and all the way through it will help, help you to make, sure, make sure you make the right informed decisions as you go forward um, on this sort of basis. So it's that full on support that you might require. Um, if you don't mind moving on, Caroline. We're currently now obviously de dedicating some of our online programmes to overseas cohorts as well. Um, so we have two different separate um, cohorts running for overseas. We have one in February, which is dedicated to Cyprus. And this is to make sure that we go through all the legislation that's involved in trading in Cyprus on the SBA and in Cyprus as the country itself and the implications that Brexit might have had on that as well. So we'll, we'll talk you through all the nitty gritty of what's involved there in addition to the actual business startup side of it as well. And then in April, we'll have a European overseas cohort, which will go through trading in, in European bases as well um, on that sort of basis to ensure that you're aware of what the implications again, because now we've left the EU on how to trade overseas. So we'll make sure that's all familiar. But alongside all that, we still go through all the basics of what that business is all, is all involved as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, next slide. So the, the programme is itself, we do keep the programme very informal to make sure you get the best learning experience. It's not necessarily all textbooks learning. We make it fun and experience as well. And if you speak to anybody that's been on the programme, hopefully they'll all say the same thing there. And I've got listed some of the delegates comments they've had. Um, we've been running the programme now since 2012. So it's not a new programme. And we've just now supported over one and a half thousand um, 1,500 people go through the startups up there in their business as well. So you probably find someone that's been on the programme that you can ask their honest opinion to as well. And please do that because it's always better to hear it from somebody who's been there and done it with ourselves. So, yeah, people get all sorts of experiences from it, not just learning about business. They get the confidence they need to have that new direction. Loads of new friends and support you can get through the network as well and that collaboration and encouragement to make things different, but making sure that you've got something for yourself and something you can move forward with as well. So um, um, that's what we're about. So if running a business is something you're interested in, get in touch, we're here to help. Um, go and have a look at our new website, which is sportingunsunghero.co.uk. Everything's on there, all our course listings of when you can tap into them, or if not, you can drop us an email or pick up the phone um, and just get in touch and, and ask. Thank you very much. So then, thank you, Sarah. Moving over to Richie for the chat room. Any news? Uh, no, no, nothing in the chat room, uh, Caroline. OK, and one question I've got is what about cost, Sarah? How, how much would it cost somebody to, to do that? Um, the best thing about it, it's all free. So it doesn't cost you anything. It just costs you a bit of your time um, to sit, up, sit in your living room or wherever you want to sit to come and attend the course. So, yeah, it's, it's all free. No cost at all. And you've got one starting in Cyprus soon, haven't you? Yeah, our Cyprus cohort is um, the end of February, um, 24th of February, the Cyprus cohort starts. But we've got plenty of others as well, so if that's not suitable, they run pretty much every month. So there's plenty of time to, to get on one if they're available to you. Okay, lovely. Hi, hi Sarah. Something's just come in on the, um, on the chat from Lisa. Is uh, If you've already got uh, a business running and you need a bit of advice how to grow it, can they get in touch with you for that? Yeah, most definitely. Um, it's even if you've got a business that's been running a couple of months or a year and you want to go back to the basics of what that business is all about, then you can attend our course and get our support. So most definitely, whether it's a new business already started, then get in touch. And even if to the point that you haven't quite got an idea that's um, a firm idea at the moment, 
then it's probably a good time to attend the course as well to iron out any creases or go through that idea in a bit more detail as well. So yeah, no problem. Whether your idea started, already started, you can get the support you want. Okay, I just had a follow-up question there from Nicola Holland saying, uh, do I need a business idea first before starting? So do I think you've just answered that? Yes, so no, you don't need an idea. If you're interested in it, then come along and join us. (laughs) Thanks. I must admit, when we've been at an event, Sarah, and I've seen seen you on, on the stand, and it's quite nice seeing the partners of coming up to you, having done the course, and you're all like a big family, aren't you? So it's quite a nice, uh, it was a nice vibe to be able to hear that conversation, um, actually. That was at Bryce Norton, actually, we were down at an event. Um, yeah. Thank you for that, Sarah. So we'll move on to the next session. So I'm going to introduce you to Charlene Brooks, who is the um, Career Transition Partnership Project Manager for the Partner Career Support Programme. So I'll move on to you. Charlene, over to you. Thank you, Caroline. Can you just move on to the next slide Mm. for me, please? Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, And so, as Caroline says, I'm the the project manager then for the CTP on um, the Partner um, Career Support Programme. So what I just want to do is share some information with you about the programme. It's still very new. Um, It only actually launched in November uh, last year for delivery. And really what it is, and you'll hear Finn term the PCSP from here on in, because the other one is a big mouthful. Um, it, it will offer eligible partners um, of service members of the armed forces flexible career s- support. Um, and that's including access to a personal career consultant uh, with a wealth of online tools and resources, including a CV builder uh, called My CV. And I'll talk a wee bit more about that in a sec. Uh, the, the initial PCSP trial, and this is a, a trial or, or a pilot right now, um, it'll be conducted over a period of six months. Um, like I said, it started on the 1st of November, and there are 750 spaces available to eligible applicants. And I think at this point, I would like to just say as well that this week, the eligibility criteria has been widened to include uh, partners of those who have either submitted their notice to retire or who are in their last two years or who are in resettlement previously. Um, it, it wasn't, um, those, those people were not eligible, but the MOD uh, are on this the, on the track now for whole career um, support in, in terms of training. And that's no different now in the, that transition element as well. So that's an exciting new kind of expansion to the eligibility this week. Full eligibility details are on the CTP website on the partner partner page, um, and you can read all about it there. Really, the programme was set up um, because the MOD had done a lot of research around the support that partners wanted and needed, and it was really dispelling the myths that partners follow their, their serving uh, spouse and they don't want or can't have a meaningful career of their own. And really, when I was designing this program, it was clear that there were two groups that we needed to focus on uh, providing for from the outset. Those who are seeking employment and those who are ready to develop in their career, either up or laterally. Um, so, And, and the, the, the program is focused for those two cohorts of people. And really, the journey is from our client service um, administrator interaction. So we do a triage and um, see what your... your um, your requirements are what your needs are from the program and you'll get demos of the virtual program my career path which as i say i'll talk a bit more about um and then we'll do some intelligence gathering as well and then you'll be handed over to a career consultant um and the, the coaching elements uh, that they'll deliver through the one-to-one guidance sessions and that includes developing a personal career plan as well so that you know you can plan this out because Some people are just not ready at the minute to embark on a new career or change their career. Uh, They want to have a plan in place to do that, or they may want to wait until the children have started school or or whatever that reason is. So a career plan is put in place uh, with the the participants. Their early feedback that we're getting um, is that this is what partners have been waiting for. Um, It's that feeling valued by the MOD um, and, you know, it's a, a super source of support so far. Um, next slide, please, Carolyn. 
Um, and I just wanted to share with you a really quick update on where we're at just now. As I said, we delivered, started delivering early November. We have 400 applications, it's actually more than that now, but um, the vast majority of these applicants have been eligible, which is great because it shows that there are that this is needed um, and the support is really relevant um, that we're putting in place. And really what we want to do is, um, oh, sorry, the other, I just wanted to mention that only 16% so far are coming from the RAF. So this was, I was really excited to be coming on here to tell you that this is available for you because it's potentially the, the fact that people don't know that, that this is there right now. Um, and so, you know, if you want to um, apply, please, I would encourage you to do that. Um, we are looking really at pushing the boundaries of attracting, engaging potential candidates. Social media, for example, is about, I've got a couple of Facebook lives later on with the Royal Naval bases. And um, for example, Instagram, TV, radio interviews to try and get out and maximize our reach um, to, to people, particularly partners who are dispersed and not living on base. Um, we have a broad spread of, of uh, participants as far as Australia. Um, so I encourage you to apply even if you are overseas. Um, and as I say, reaching those dif uh, dispersed families not near, near bases. Um, so far we have run, again, this figure has changed since, since I've done this presentation, but you know, in and around 400 coaching sessions to participants and 28 events and webinars yesterday. And yesterday we ran our first virtual employer event as well. Um, and we had Barclays, Little, the NHS, um, and one other, which is totally just escaped my mind, and it was only yesterday. Um, but we had breakout rooms, and we brought those employers together with the, the partners virtually so that you could chat and ultimately engage them in, um, in employment. Uh, next slide there, Caroline, please. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to talk a bit more, as I promised I would, about My Career Path. My Career Path is our virtual platform. This is bespoke. This is designed specifically with partners in mind um, in relation to the research that we've done that said what you needed and what you wanted. And My Career Path is all virtual, and which means that you can do it whenever you can and you need to. Um, and it will really empower you, as it says on there, to take charge of your own career development. Um, the interactive tools on there, well, there's lots of e-learning content um, from workplace skills in IT right through to project management, some health and safety stuff on there. Uh, there's, there's hundreds of different courses. Um, and you, you also have access to career assessment activities amongst other things as well. Um, the career assessment activities are really those psychometric tests to help you start to understand your career path um, and how you need to develop that. Um, this whole thing starts with you taking your career, what we call your career pulse. So your career pulse then is based around 10 questions that the, the system will prompt you to answer before you can go any further around areas of um, like workplace skills and um, confidence areas on um, working with teams and um, wellness, for example. Once you answer those 10 questions then your career pulse then will deliver you a report that will tell you what your three areas to work on. So development are and what your three strengths are um, as it relates to the workplace and understanding your career path. Um, and really what that report is, then it acts as a, um, a foundation for your career, your career plan that you'll ultimately go on to develop with your career consultant. Um, the last point on there is the My CV part. Um, My CV is a CV builder that um, you can do on him. There's, you can do as many as you want to, but it goes straight through to your career consultant. So the, the, the system will score your CV based on um, applicant tracking systems across uh, large organizations in the UK. So what are they looking for? What are these applicant tracking systems looking for? Um, and then once it gives you that score, it'll tell you out of 100, your CV has scored this many, or the, say 70% because it looks like it's an old document and it hasn't been updated um, in a while, or you have missed off something. Um, and then it goes to your career consultant then who'll do a human deep dive into it and then you can take it offline and um, really work on your CV or multiple CVs um, or functional documents if you need to do that. So completely interactive. Um, there's interview simulator tools on here too. You told us that 
interviews were a big concern in terms of in terms of confidence areas. So we built in elevator pitches and simulator tools as well. So I suppose the takeaway um, is that, um, and I think that was my last slide anyway, wasn't it, Carolyn? Yep. Um, the takeaway is that our at the applications close on the 31st of March. Um, the link is on this presentation. Um, we have a full partner page uh, built for, for you with uh, FAQs on there, links to our events calendars, um, all of the information that you'll need, including some videos um, about the program specifically. Um, and just to say, if you haven't applied, please do. Um, there are lots and lots of challenges right now, and we're hearing from partners that they just don't have time to um, spend on themselves right now, and that's okay. If you apply for the program, we can pause it until you're ready, and in some cases, that's when the kids go back to school because we're all homeschooling and that sort of stuff. Um, we can pause the program until you're ready, so long as it's completed before the end of May when the trial ends. Thank you. Thanks, Charlene. So, any questions? Richie, have we got anything in the chat box? Yeah, we certainly have. Um, so, Charlene, stand by. So, first of all, actually quite a positive uh, comment from, from Kelly Wales saying that a friend of, uh, of hers was uh, posted to Washington, felt lost and, and disconnected, uh, signed up for a course, and then um, now she feels a lot more confident about the future and the next step. So, that's obviously a positive for somebody who's gone overseas. Um, a question from Danielle Hodgson is asking, is this available to people overseas? Um, so yes, it is. Ultimately, the pilot concentrates on understanding your career options for a career in the UK. But many of our partners who, and, and the take up rate from partners abroad is currently 15% of all applications are coming from overseas. Um, and as I said, overseas is, is as far away as Australia, US. Um, I think there's one in Singapore as well. So yes is the, is the answer. Um, and my career path has a, a, a built-in job search function. Um, and I actually looked at the overseas one specifically last night um, for someone. And the jobs pull from across the globe. Um, it's really difficult to um, give specific career advice for overseas because there's, I mean, you use a resume in the US instead of a CV and that's very different. Um, so the career advice um, may be different, but certainly it is worth your while going on the program um, to put a plan in place because mostly somebody just needs to talk to a professional to get, to get the information they need. They already know it, but they need to get it down into a plan. Thanks, Shirley. There's, there's a couple of others as, as well, which um, are very similar in context of what people are asking. So, so Gemma Cross has, has put a question to us before we came online in the webinar, um, saying that she currently works as a teaching assistant and would love to look to train to become a teacher, um, and but doesn't have a degree. And she's looking at, um, is there any advice or assistance you could provide for her for full for, to do some training? Yeah, so with the, the, this pilot programme, and I can't speak to what the MOD will do um, after the pilot, but there, um, there is no, there's no part of funding as such, you know, to kind of to retrain. Um, but there are various pathways, and we, we do currently have a lot of teaching assistants that want to make that leap into becoming teachers on the program currently and the career consultants are working with them on how best to do that because individual circumstances are so different um, and that may be um, that they can't they can't come out of work you know to do, do a degree so what's the pathway there um, it may be that they need to secure funding um, for, for that so I mean realistically there, there's investment of time and and money in most cases from the participant but again it's about getting that plan in place okay um similar question from from uh somebody, fern bennett who's a similar sort of question really about offering support to training looks to under, undertake a three-year study course so i think you've just answered that in that uh, the previous answer uh, i would okay. say yeah. um amy Holgard has asked um about any career support for spouses so i think you've just covered that in your presentation as well uh, by based on what you've just been saying yeah. Okay. Going well yeah, so far. Anything else? Yeah, until going. Hang on. Oh, sorry. 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 I, I haven't finished yet. Um, any courses that help spouses into work? That's from a, a lady called Joanne Steele, um, who's a health and uh, safety professional 
um, but then looking at options about childcare and, and various other courses that might help to get into work. So I think you've also covered that off in your presentation as well. Yeah, there's lots of e-learning modules um, in my career path, like I say, so it's it's worthwhile as you know, getting on the programme and seeing how that how that virtual platform can help. Um, and in most cases, you know, what we're what we find is a lot of people think that they need it, this qualification. You know, this is the holy grail, and more often than not, it's it's not that. You know, it's about selling yourself um, and having the the one to one support to be able and have the confidence to do that in the first place. Okay, and and a final one from uh, Julie Hart, um, who said she's just come back from Cyprus and did some voluntary work out there, um, and as she's looking at. Um, uh, what career paths you'd like to follow so again i'm assuming that you can contact yourselves and, and and see what's available through yourselves 100 percent, yeah and um, get applying on the the link um that's here it's on the ctp website um and the link the link for applications is really visible on the partner page so you can go ahead and do that okay that's great charlie no, no other questions at the moment thanks very much Thank lovely you. thanks for that thank you charlene right so we're going to rapidly move on i'm conscious of uh, of time um, so that we're going to now look focus on networks to join. We spoke earlier about the Millspell network that people can join. This is the military co-working network. And I'm going to introduce you to Kelly Wales. Hi, thanks, Caroline. Thanks, everybody. Um, so my name is Kelly and I work for the military co-working network. Um, I run the online events such as the power hours that we have where we invite guests like Sarah Walker to come and talk about the um, startup programs. Um, so we invite people on to give us a, a, a download of what's available out there. Um, we hold various network natters where people get together and have a good chinwag about what's going on and how we can help and support. Um, and we do host a welcome webinars. So if you do want to find out about more about the military co-working um, network, then you can join us on our monthly welcome webinars. Um, Caroline's just got a short video just to show you about the network. Caroline. So um, the network is a combination of an online community and a physical and the physical um, co-working spaces on military bases for partners of those serving um, in the military and it's for our, the partners to go to um, to work from. Um, our online network provides an opportunity for all partners to engage with and benefit from and be supported. Um, next slide, please. So uh, the reason why we exist is because of the outcomes of the FAMCAST survey. Um, and we ran our own survey last year. Um, 
<clears throat> and as you can see, it's because there was a neg there is a ne negative effect on partners' careers if you are um, obviously married to somebody in the military. So we are providing spaces and the online community where you can tap into the network and benefit from um, working alongside others who are in the same situation as yourself. Next slide, please. So this is just a little bit of feedback um, from our members. Um, recently, we held um, our welcome webinar and she, a lady was in Riyadh and she connected with um, spouses in the UK to give them some support about running their business when they were to move out, out of the country. Um, it provides an opportunity for people to share their skills um, so that if somebody has been able to keep their job um, by applying to an employer to work remotely, that person will then help somebody else to go through the, the process. Um, somebody here has put, you know, referring to the hubs, it's given me a place to meet people and escape the house um, when they're new and adjusting to army life. Um, so there's lots of different benefits from joining the physical hubs, but also from the online network. Next slide, please, Carolyn. So the benefits of joining the military co-working network, especially at the moment, because obviously these spaces are closed um, because of COVID restrictions. So the online network here is to be supportive so that you don't feel isolated and alone. Um, it is a big move being abroad. Um, like Maria said, there are loads of people on the uh, webinar today that might be posted abroad. So being connected, no matter where you are in the world, um, brings us together and you can network with like-minded individuals. Um, we do, like I said, share learning opportunities. So we invite people in to give um, talks and how we can support. So we had um, CTP um, a few weeks ago talking about their program um, and sharing the benefits of, of, of taking part in the program. Um, Reducing loneliness and isolation. You are not alone. We are all going through exactly the same situation at exactly the same time. Um, so being able to talk about your frustrations and your wins and the negative and the positive side um, is, is, is why the network exists. Um, so if you are lucky to have a co-working space to go and work from, then you do get um, a desk. Um, relaxing and welcoming office space and free Wi-Fi and good coffee and conversation. Next slide, please, Caroline. So that's the end of that one. Thank you, Kelly, for that. And I just want to check in with Richie. We're going to canter through any questions. Uh, no, no questions, just a couple of comments uh, from okay. um, one, one from Maria saying that uh, she likes the fact that it gives partners the networking opportunity. Uh, that doesn't focus on the assumption you've got children and Nims also then posted she agrees with Maria's comments. Other than that, that's it. Great, very comprehensive then, Kelly. Thank you, thank <laughs> you for that. Um, you. Right, so this brings us on to uh, the RAF Benevolent Fund. So I'm going to introduce you to Caroline Fielding, who's the Wellbeing Manager. Caroline, are you off mute? Yes, there she goes. Yeah, yeah. good afternoon, yeah. everyone. Um, I'm sorry, I'm really going to have to sort of canter through. <laughs> um, and I, unfortunately, I won't be able to take any questions afterwards, but uh, my contact details are available. Um, and please, you know, don't hesitate to get in touch with me if there's anything that comes up during this sort of presentation that you'd like to follow up on. Um, as Caroline mentioned there, I am the wellbeing manager at the RAF Benevolent Fund. So part of my role involves sort of mostly listening counselling, um, listening counselling service and some of our other social isolation projects, um, as well as general wellbeing. And the Thrive workshops have really sort of come out of, of this part of our wellbeing focus at the fund. Um, one of the things that we'd sort of become aware of um, more recently was that issues around employment um, were not sort of simply just about people not having experience or, or not having qualifications. Actually, you know, that was that was often not a problem at all. Um, but there were a lot of sort of concerns around not really knowing what 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 you wanted to do or how you wanted to achieve that. So what we um, wanted to develop with Thrive was a program that would really look at those um, those areas. So. As we can see from here, what, it, what we hope to do with our Thrive programme is to help identify what people want to achieve and how they can do that. Um, and then as almost as a byproduct of that, increase employability, 
improve um, well-being and emotional resilience and reduce social isolation. Um, yeah, so um, if we could just go on to the next slide, please. So these are our upcoming workshops. So, <clears throat> sorry, our first programmes of, of 2021 are Developing Courage on the 4th of February to the 25th of February and then Goal Setting in March. So um, obviously with everything at the moment, this is being delivered online um, and remote. How it works is that the, um, for the workshops, Developing Courage, there's four 90 minute online sessions. And this is a um, run um, in partnership with a training company called Bright Rebel Coaching and the um, facilitator on all our workshops is a woman called Claire. What's fantastic about Claire is she is a veteran herself. She has a very good understanding of the challenges that face um, RAF um, families. Um, there are 10 spaces available on each course um, and it is on a first come first serve basis so we encourage people to um, if they're interested to get in touch with us as soon as possible. Um, how they work is it's a, it's a mixture of group discussion, personal reflection as well as sort of small tasks and exercises um, and as I said it's, one, it's once a week um, for four weeks um, and there is also the opportunity for some additional support um, if that's needed, if there's some specific things that are, that are causing barriers. Um, I know we don't, um, to talk a little bit just um, on developing courage. So the point of this, uh, of this workshop is to look at confidence and self-esteem. Uh, Claire focuses on our mindsets, um, where they come from, what may be um, cause, causing blockages for us or, or causing um, issues in terms of achieving things that we'd like to achieve. Um, and she does that, as I say, not only in a group session, it's that nice mixture of professional and peer support, also creating a really sort of comfortable um, environment for people to, to ask questions and to learn and, and to reflect. Um, and then we look to move on to goal setting in March, which it, often they work as a nice sort of one too. So if you've been on one, you can then go on to the next one. Um, and that's a slightly more uh, practical series um, about sort of setting realistic goals and how we achieve them. Um, but again, very much focusing on sort of self-confidence and um, self-reflection. Yeah, so if we can move on to the, the next slide. Um, yeah, so we've been running the um, workshops for just under a year now. We're having some really positive comments, really lots of good feedback. One of the women who's contributed to start our own business and we've had some other people uh, get into employment as well. So it's, um, it's, we're really pleased with how it's going and obviously always looking for feedback for those who participated for how we can improve it. Um, but we hope that this is going to be a really sort of um, useful tool for people um, to access. It's completely, well, I think this is mentioned to someone else, it's completely funded by the Benevolent Fund. So it's just a case of, of signing up um, if you find it helpful. Um, there's lots of information on our website, or as I said at the beginning, my, my contact details are, are on a slide at the end and I'm, I'm sure Caroline can send them out as well. Mm. Yes. Um, and then just finally, a bit of a, a, bit of a curve ball um, on the next slide is I just thought it would be useful to mention our legal advice service because sometimes things that, um, issues we have surrounding employment or whatever might not just you know there are there are legal sort of issues that might be helpful to just have a bit of clarification on we offer free telephone legal legal advice in partnership with a company called law express um where you'll speak to someone as it says here with at least five years experience in the relevant area of law so if that's employment law or family law or tax law if you're setting up uh your own your own business then they'll be able to help you with that um but yeah sorry so i feel like i've whoosh through uh what is great program but i really hope it sort of gives you a flavor of, of what's on offer and how it might be able to support you i've just put your final keeping in touch slide up then caroline just so people have got your contact details if they want it and also the recording will pick that up for the future viewers as well and thank you for for hanging in there and doing that presentation for us actually yeah. I think it's one of those courses where you know it, it, it complements the other offers that are being talked about today so you know it's, it's a good step into perhaps doing the business startup courses and, and what have you and in terms of the legal advice if you come to us with any issues or concerns and it's legal advice that's required it's quite often Caroline's team that will come to go to on that legal element so it's an example of how we all work together as well and do that collaborative working for you so and there's no charge. We're just we're here for you to to make use of. So, Caroline, thank you for that. Richie, did you have any quick comments, or or um, should we pick those up in at the end? There's no comments for for, for that one, Caroline. Uh, both Carolines, actually. All right. 
Thank there you. we go. Good Thank name. You. Right. Okay. Thank you, Thank Caroline. You. <laughs> so we're going to move on to our own um, overseas support. Uh, so I'm going to introduce you to initially to Jay to Co, who's our web content officer. Now I'll let her explain why she's chatting to you today. Hi, I'm Jade. Um, I've been with the Families Federation for just under a year and I was brought on board to do an overseas project developing and designing new content for the overseas section of the website. Um, so through, through the research I've done for the, for the project, I've had the opportunity to speak with families overseas about their experiences and there's lots of really good benefits of being overseas but there are also uh, the odd challenge thrown in there and it seems that employment issues that are faced in the UK uh, are similar or amplified when you're overseas um, and it's not uncommon to hear that other halves have had to put their careers on hold for um, one of many reasons whether it's childcare restrictions or visas and, and the like so if you do find yourself or you are currently uh, unexpectedly unemployed, there is some positive action you can take. And I've got some points on, on the screen that I'd recommend. Um, rather than talk through all the great resources that we've covered off today, um, just really to say that they are all accessible online. Thank you, COVID. Um, so services that might have been delivered previously on a face to face basis are now accessible remotely. Um, so all those resources and tools um, are open to you, if, even if you are based overseas at the minute. Flip on to the next slide. Um, if you're at other stages within your overseas journey, uh, you might be considering um, an overseas move for, for the family or you might be returning um, from overseas. There's a few ways in which we can help you as a fan fed. Um, again, you can see that on the slide. I don't need to read that all out for you. Things that I want to highlight first is the website, of course, because that's the project that I'm working on at the minute. Um, the overseas content is currently in beta and hope to have that launched, certainly in the first quarter, but with some luck in February. Um, and with that information, it's been structured um, throughout different phases of the overseas journey. Um, so whether you're overseas, whether you're returning, whether you're thinking about it, whether you've got your assignment order. Um, and we also address key concerns um, and topics uh, for families that are overseas as well. And the last point there is the practical help um, that I'd want to point out as well. So we have got a dedicated team um, for, to help with any issues or concerns that you're facing. Um, and I will pass over to Ken now. He's from that support and outreach team and he'll tell you more about the great work that they do. Ken? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Ken and for, I'm going to take a few minutes of your time. Firstly, I'm going to introduce myself and a little bit about my background because it's quite important that people come to us that they, they realise our background. As Maria said early, early on in the presentation, uh, some of us are from a military background and some of us are connected to military and some of us are specialists. So with me, I was in the Royal Air Force for 22 years. And in that time, uh, I lived in all types of military accommodation. I completed several postings around the world and overseas, including numerous detachments on operation on operational tours. Uh, me and my wife, we had two children. So we endured the issues with the constant uh, moves, the effect on the children with their schools, finding schools, the children making friends. And also more importantly as well, my wife having to leave jobs that she really enjoyed, she was really good at, and then having to find constant employment with the moves. And I did move quite a lot in my time, so that was, that was a real, real issue. Uh, after living in all the military houses, I did eventually move into my own house. So that was, that was good for my future when I was leaving the Royal Air Force. That gives me a very good understanding of life in the RAF, and I think the difficulties that it, that it brings and, and the effects to the the whole family and I think that's a big point it affects the whole family children and wives and partners I left the RAF after 22 years and then I had the the uh, pleasure of transitioning into civilian life which is a, another very complex area and I spent 10 years I'm working for the prison and probation service which actually was quite good I found when I've come to the family federation because I, I I've spent time in service and I've spent a good deal of time out of service it gives me a very good 
all round view of, of the world in general, which was really good. I've been working for the Family Federation now for just under two years, and I work in the support and outreach team. And we as a team are normally your first point of contact. And when you come to us, very small team, four people, three of us are ex-service, and between us, I think we've got 98 years of military experience. So most things that you come to us with reference to service, we've normally experienced. And the fourth member, more importantly, Gregory, is actually a, uh, that word that Caroline said, a spouse, and his wife's serving. So he's actually living in military accommodation now and living that life. So between us, we've got a really good all round uh, view of what's happening really. And quickly, very quickly, just going to go on to a case. And uh, it's a quite a recent case. And it just outlines some of the problems that a, uh, a service family can encounter returning to the UK after an overseas posting and seeking employment. Like I say, it's a very quick overview. So this lady, she came back to the UK with a serving husband. She'd actually lived over there for 10 years, but, uh, married her husband when she was over there, who was serving. The first question she, she wanted was uh, a query about claiming job seekers allowance. And that led us into uh, claiming tax credit through HMRC. She then gained employment. And then we had problems about DBS checks, proven identity, because her, her documents were still reflecting overseas details. And then she needed a criminal records check for the periods overseas. And uh, I mean, that's a, a really quick overview, but that case was from August till November. It was, it was quite complex in the end. And if we just have the final slide, please, Caroline. And the final slide, I think, just actually, if you have a quick read of it, actually shows the, the, uh, the lady really appreciated the help we gave her to navigate the problems she encountered. And we navigated them by using our past experience with similar cases. And also, more importantly at times, the network of organizations we use, uh, for example, the DWP and the Armed Forces Champions are, are fantastic people to deal with. SAFA, the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund, we, we, we use their uh, benefits advisors, another fantastic team we can tap into. But the final result was that the lady did gain employment as a family liaison officer and activity coordinator. And as you'll see, uh, the help we provided was really, really appreciated by her. That's a very quick overview of a very long case, to be honest. But if you do have any questions on this or anything else, please feel free to send in via the chat room. We, we, we do look forward to hearing you in the future. That's it, Caroline. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. So just moving on over to uh, to Richie, have we got anything in the chat room? Uh, nothing in the chat room at the moment, Caroline, but just one question for Kenny. Um, just for everybody's awareness, I, I work in the same team as Kenny, so so we, we do work together on this. Um, Kenny, that, that lady who came back, obviously quite a stressful time when she came back trying to solve various different things. Uh, what, what advice would you give to people who are uh, currently serving overseas and are due to come back shortly to get themselves prepared for, for various things that like this I might come up uh, against? I, that's, that's actually, I think that's a re really good question actually, Richie. Yeah. And it follows on to what Jade was talking about. The, the work that Jade's done on the, the overseas website is, is phenomenal really. And it, just going back to this case, you know, claiming job seekers, tax credits, DBS checks, you know, criminal records checks. These are all the kind of things that we evidence that come in that are all going to be built into, if not already built into that overseas website. So my advice would be at the moment, certainly go to that website and look at the information on there. There's um, certainly things that need to, that are much easier if you do it before you leave your country that you're posted to, aren't, aren't there? Yeah, well, yeah, but very much so. Like, like a criminal record checks. We, we can give people the details of who to contact in every country in the world to get a criminal records check. But when you come back to the UK, that can be really quite difficult. When you're actually using the military word in theatre, you went, when you're over there, it can be really quite an easy thing to do. And, and we've, we've, experienced, we've experienced the complexities of that. So yeah, most definitely. Lovely, thank you. Right, we'll move on. So we're gonna move back to Maria now to, to do a summary for us. We're back two slides from the end for those of you that are still on board. Thank you for saying, I'm conscious we have overrun a little bit, um, but hope you think it's all really useful information. Maria, over to you. You're just on mute at the moment. 
you can see the sun's in your Apologies. eyes. Apologies, yes, I was, I was squinting there because <laughs> I'm trying to sit somewhere sunny and it's bad fire because it's just too sunny, which is not normally an issue in January. Um, I'm really conscious of, I'm, all I'm really going to say is thank you so much to those of you who were able to attend live and to all our contributors. Um, I imagine this will get a, a reasonable number of views um, for people watching in their own time because one o'clock UK time is not going to work for everyone. And what I would encourage you to do is come back to us with questions. So if that was all a whistle stop tour through what's quite a lot of options out there for you, and we understand that that may al almost make it seem too confusing. Well, um, that's not what it's supposed to do. It's here to whet your appetite, to make you feel that there is a lot of support out there for you. Please explore those organisations. And if you're not quite sure what's the first one you should be engaging with or where you sit in all that, what you're eligible for, go to our website, report an issue on the, uh, the red button, which makes it sound worrying. It doesn't need to be an issue. It can just be a question and we'll sort you out um, through that route. Oh, that's all from me. Thanks, Caroline. OK, and then I'm just going to finish up to say if you haven't already, I would encourage you to sign up to our e-bulletin here. It's a once a week only uh, news story uh, snapshot. So it's everything we've gathered over the week. And uh, Nick here in the comms team will summarise all that and pop it into a one one email only. And again, it's it's free to sign up to. Um, and you can do that off of our website by clicking on this button just here. Um, and Envoy, if you are living on stations, most service family accommodation gets Envoy sent directly to their properties. But if you don't and you live off camp or you're overseas, it includes you as well. Um, sign up again online to the next little button over here on our sparkly new website and we will send Envoy to you. And again, there's articles in there about spousal employment uh, support and um, the course that Charlene's just talked to you about, that's in there, Forces Families Jobs. We, we rotate the articles around the military co-working network too. So please sign up to that. The e-bulletin isn't just around career support, it's around all sorts of things to do with life in the RAF or the armed forces, um, sometimes include discounts and things like that as well. So it's quite worth looking at. Easy to unsubscribe if you find it's not for you. Um, literally, you just unsubscribe electronically. And we do that for you. And all that leaves us just to say is to uh, say we've got all our social media down here on the bottom. So please follow us if you don't already. Um, and do please keep in touch. Come to us if you've got any issues or concerns um, or if you've got feedback you want to pass on to us. So uh, thank you again for joining us. It's been great that you've been on board and uh, please pass on as much information as you can to friends and, and family. And uh, thank you for joining us.